this meeting is recorded and is available for viewing on YouTube after at a later date. Uh, so consequently, I want to remind all parties that the hearing is formal, is a formal legal proceeding, and that all parties are expected to conduct themselves accordingly. Um, so uh, first off, I'll do my name is, as I said, this is a board of uh, examiners for nursing meeting. My name is Peppy Fard. I am an RM member and the chair. Mary? Mary Dietman, I'm an RN member and an EPRN. Rebecca? I'm Rebecca Martinez and I'm an LPN member. Brett? My name is Brett Prestia. I'm a physician, but I am on the board as a member of the public. Okay, Gina? Uh, Gina Reiner, I'm an RN member and I'm an APRN. Jason? This is Jason, I am a public member. Okay, Jen, are you here? Jen Long, APRN member. Cindy, did you get on? Okay, well, everyone, please. Not you. Oh, there I am. I myself off the video. Sorry about that. Uh, just everyone, please, everyone else, please mute yourselves. Okay, thank you. Um, Again, Cindy, are you on yet? Okay, I guess she's still having trouble. Okay, and for the department, uh, Stacy. Yes, this is Stacy Shulman. I am counsel to the board. Uh, I see Dana's on. Good morning, Dana Dalton, Department of Public Health. Is Helen on? Not hearing her and uh, I want to introduce the legal director. I'm hoping I have that title right. Uh, Kathleen Ross, please uh, introduce yourself to the board. Hi, everyone. I'm Kathleen Ross. I'm the legal director uh, for the Department of Public Health, which includes the Public Health Hearing Office. So um, we do have a new board liaison that uh, you'll be meeting soon. Um, but if you have issues, you can always reach out to me. Again, my name is Kathleen Ross. So uh, at this point in time, that means that Diane, who has done a yeoman's job, was thrown into the pack, so to speak. Uh, she will be leaving us, and she knew all along that she'd be leaving because um, she was only a temp. So we will have a new person who's the new Diane, who Diane was the new Jeff. So uh, we'll welcome her and hope that um, we want to welcome her to all the boards, Tyra. So. Um, I'll be meeting her on Friday, um, so just want to welcome her and I want to thank Diane for her her incredible uh, work that she's done in a very um, chaotic, chaotic some, somewhat situation. So Diane, thank you for your service. Um, get rid of that. <laughs> and there was, and I'll need to also say there's been a development over the weekend uh, and we have, as uh, Attorney Schulman said, a new board member, Salvatore Diaz, and consequently that means that as an R. Diane, we have to get rid of that. I am trying, trying, Perfect. trying, trying. Because we're never going to be able to hear the recordings. Diane, I sent you an email with some instructions. That I think might help. I have been doing that, and for whatever reason, it is just not. And it's just not. All right, I'm going to try. I may have um, shut that off for you. This is Tyra speaking. Oh, fabulous. Oh, Tyra's there. Okay, welcome, Tyra. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. So, yeah, so we do have a new board member and uh, is an RN member and consequently there, um, Jerry has been uh, asked to step down and we want to thank Jerry for all her work the last 10 years that she's been on the board and uh, we are sorry to see her go. So, Jerry, thank you for all your service to the board and all your insights and all your valuable contributions. Okay, continuing, 
Uh, I guess that kind of was the chair update. Um, I believe Cindy's on now. Yes, I see her. All right. Cindy, Lisa you want to yourself? Can you talk? Uh, apparently, she's still wait. Uh, did you get all those messages, Diane? Um, I have. Yeah, I don't. This is the downside of teams. Okay. I believe I saw Cindy was still having problems. <coughs> and uh, I'm going Mr. to Diaz, our new board member, uh, is waiting to join. Hi, Pat. I'm on the phone. I can't get into the meeting. Well, we're having a lot of Teams problems. Huh. Okay. You're not the young one. So, okay. It says waiting. We'll let you in. So. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on with teams, but we're having a little problem. And I just got an email from some people who are also waiting for um, for the um, Connecticut State Community College names I recognize who are waiting to join also. They have something on the agenda. So. I am going to resend the link. Okay. I, there's this a um, message in the chat that uh, board member Salvatore Diaz is trying to get in. Yeah, I told her. Yeah, I saw that. Hi. Okay, so this is Lisa. This is the, uh, while we oh. figure out teams for those who are in the meeting who have anything to bring to the board's attention, um, this is your opportunity under the public comment uh, portion of the meeting. Uh, um, be, sure to unmute, be sure to unmute yourself. Uh, so we can hear what you want to say. Okay. Dana? Yes. Hi. Good morning. Um, I just want to say one thing about the um, the meeting. I had to join with the by entering the code and the password. Otherwise, it just made me say it said I was keep, kept waiting for a long time. So I don't know if that'll help anyone else that's trying to get in now. If you want to let them know to try. Um, but I had a brief update about some changes that the department is going to do. Um, for many years, um, the department has sent letters out to each school once they've um, put in a request and the letter summarizes the board's, you know, the response to each school's request for, you know, a waiver or an appointment of a dean or something like that. Um, and the department was um, just due to time and staffing, et cetera. We're not going to be sending the letters anymore and we'll have the schools just rely on, you know, the board's response during the meeting and they can always refer to the recordings or the minutes if they need to clarify anything. So that's um, that's all I have. <laughs> and Helen was going to send out a reminder to the schools on that just so that in case they weren't here today to hear that. OK, thank Thanks. you. Uh, any questions for Dana on the, the little change in process? OK, hearing none. And now, is there anyone else from the public who would like to uh, comment? Pat, this is Lisa. I just want to mention that I could not get on by my computer, but I was able to immediately get on through my phone okay. to the video meeting. OK, so Jamie, you seem to be saying something, but you're muted. No, OK, <laughs> OK, all right. Uh, Paula says she can't get in to Grego. So uh, we're having obviously some teams issues. Um, this, this, at this point in time, I just, um, even though it's on the agenda, I understand that there was an additional summary suspension that came in yesterday for a, let me get the name properly. Pat, uh, Kathleen Ross has her hand up. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Unmute yourself. You're muted. I think I know what the problem is. Um, there is an additional. Whoa, I don't know what that was. 
Anyone that has been speaking should probably mute their phones, yeah, everyone please. Everyone mute themselves, please. Okay. So an additional summary suspension came to the hearing office yesterday, and I advised Diane not to amend the agenda and post it because it was too late, right? Uh, agendas need to be posted 24 hours in advance because this is a regular meeting. That consideration of that some that motion for summary suspension could be added to the agenda. But I think what happened was Diane amended the agenda anyway and sent it out to people. And it appears that the old agenda, which is the agenda that was posted to the public, has a different meeting code than the one that's in the new agenda. So that would explain why some people can get in and some people can't. It depends on which agenda you're looking at. So that's my thought. It has to be the original agenda, I think, is what you're saying. It should be the original agenda. Right. I signed on with the new one. Two, with only two summaries on it. I yeah. signed in with the new agenda. So did I. Did with the latest email. Okay. Did that anyone sign wrong. in? Did anyone sign in with the old agenda? I did. Because I, I did. got a memo from Stacy. Yep. I did. I also signed in with the old agenda. This is Helen from Department of Public Health. I was in the waiting room for about 20 minutes with the new agenda. Then I went to the Me old too. one and got in. And then you went to the old one and got in. Huh. Well. <clears throat> well, did she post the, I thought that, did that public, the second agenda with the three summaries, did that go to everyone or just to the board members? I think it went to the board members and to the DPH employees. Um, oh, that's why. Yep. So. Okay. So, okay. So uh, that right. probably that's explains the, what the problem is. Um, but Pat, yes, to you should continue to um, ask for a motion to add the summary suspension because it okay. is not, it's not on the agenda yet. Correct. Right. All right. So there was a late entry um, summary suspension from yesterday for Jacqueline uh, Alu uh, Alumno RN. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, and forgive me if I'm not. Uh, so I believe board members have received that information. Do I have a motion under the summary suspension um, item? This is Jen. I make a motion to add the uh, summary suspension for Jack. Um, no RN to the agenda. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Gina. Okay, discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of adding that item to the agenda? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Opposed? Abstaining. Okay, it was unanimous to add that item to the agenda. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, again, uh, is there, now that we've hopefully resolved some of our public, or team's issues, are there anyone in the public would like to speak at this time? Or people attending the board meeting? Please unmute yourself. Okay, hearing none. Okay, we will go next to the approval of the minutes. Um, so, uh, there are several minutes that we need to approve. So, we'll start with the first one on the agenda. Do I have a motion on the uh, minutes from October 19th, 2022? This is Gina. I make a motion to accept the minutes of October 19th, 2022, as written. Okay, do I have a second? Thank you, Rebecca. Okay. Excuse me. Um, are there any edits, corrections to the agenda? This is Jen. I have one. Minutes? Okay, go ahead. I know I wasn't there, but I read it anyways. On the pre-hearing review for Nicholas O'Brien, at the end of it, it states that no votes were taken due to lack of quorum, but I believe there's no vote because it's a pre-hearing review, not because there was a lack of quorum. Correct. Thank you for that edit. I don't even see that. But, um, did Last you get that? Line. Yeah. It 
tells me this gift. Oh, we so had him read. pass, right? That so was when we made the poor guy the lens. And I can't read. Yes, that should be stricken. Good point. Pat, any other questions, edits? Uh, okay. Um, Pat, can you hold on a second? I'm going to mute everybody because I have background. Some guys having a conversation. So. Okay, Pat. Okay. Yes. So we have a first and a second. So board members, unmute yourselves. All in favor of uh, approving the minutes as amended? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. John. Brett is abstaining. Okay. All right. Okay, so thank you for that. Next are the minutes for December 21st, 2022. Do I have a motion on the uh, minutes as presented? This is Gina. I make a motion to accept the minutes as presented for December 21st, 2022. Do I have a second? This is Cindy, I'll second. Okay, and welcome Cindy, we see you now. Thank you. Okay, discussion, you. edits. Okay, hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Brett is abstaining. Okay, thank you, Brett. Um, oh, next. shoot. I'm sorry, Pat. What? Again, in this pre in the pre-hearing review for... <laughs> Patricia Taylor, LPN. Yes. We said the, the motion. Uh, yeah, it said the motion passed unanimously. Okay, we can strike that also. Okay. Sorry. All right. So do okay. I have? Uh, do I have a motion? Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes for December twenty first as amended. Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And Brett, I assume you're still abstaining? Correct. Okay. Next, our minutes for January 18th, 2023. Do I have a motion on this minutes as written? This is Gina. I make a motion to accept the minutes for January 18, 2023 as written. All right, do I uh, have a second? This is Cindy, second. I'll second. Okay, oh. edits, comments. Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes as presented? Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Brett's abstaining. Okay. Uh, next, our minutes uh, for our special meeting we had on May 30th. Uh, do I have a motion on those minutes? This is Gina. I, I make a motion to accept the minutes for May 30th, 2023 as presented. Do I have a second? Second, Mary. Okay. Discussion edits. Um, this is Cindy. I was at that meeting, but I'm not on the roster there, but you can see I'm, I made seconded something during the meeting so well you're under yes at the top i don't am i totally missing myself i don't see my name yeah oh, her name's missing meeting. in a graph now you're second on you're right second my eight. my name's not listed well i mine says you're listed does everyone else not have her listed no. i don't see her listed either um this is gina it's the may 30th one and i don't see yeah. her name either Unless I don't either. Oh, because mine has her listed. So we'll make sure you're That's listed weird. so we have that edit. Yes, I want credit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, Hi, Pat. I just wanted to know I'm in. This is Sal. 
Hi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you got in then. Okay, so. Uh, yes, I'm in. I, I don't know. Uh, the minutes I have uh, have you listed, so I'm not sure um, what the discrepancy is, but we will make sure whatever minutes are entered officially have you in the Cindy. So okay. maybe I maybe I figured it out and and I put you in. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So just a caveat: we have a motion and a second to approve the minute minutes from May thirtieth. Uh, with the addition, be sure the addition of Cynthia Arpin is noted. Uh, all in favor of the amended minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstaining. I'll abstain. Okay. Next. Uh, our minutes for June 21st, 2023. Do I have a motion on the minutes as presented? This is Gina. I make a motion to accept the minutes uh, for June 21st, 2023 as presented. And I would like to add that I am on the minutes, but I was not in attendance. That was June 21st, 2023. It says no, you were not there. Oh, my minutes say I am there. That's very bizarre. Well, okay. you're listed, but you're listed with an N. Oh, yes. My apologies. I see the N now. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank, you. Uh, Thank you. Attorney Shulman, are you uh, talking? No, I was just wondering if they got like another set of minutes because at some point there was some confusion in our office as to the top of the um, yeah. agenda. So it, everyone's I, I think for the June one, it should be like a blue top mm -hmm. with a check yeah. box. Okay. Oh. And that's the same for the May 30th. It should be a blue top with a check box. Okay. And that's the one. And, and I looked at it. I, I'm the one who drafted it. And it says that Cindy was there. So I don't know. Um, there was some cut and pasting at some point and information got lost. And so it should be the blue box with the checks and it should show Cindy was at the May 30th meeting. Yeah, that's and the, the one. I okay. And if anyone looks different than that, then you have the wrong copy. Okay. And then uh, just to be, you know, we're doing the uh, tenants a little differently, uh, with the, the box now. And Gina, it's very clear that you were not in attendance. Okay, very good. Thank the end means no. I, I'm assuming the end is no and your yes. is yes. But yes, thank you. This is, you know, bureaucracy, so it could be something different. <laughs> anyway, so I technically I don't think you can move to approve the minutes no. and you weren't there. Okay. Right. So uh, I still need a motion okay. on the minutes for June 21st. This is, this is Lisa. I motion that we approve the minutes for the meeting held on June 21st, 2023. Okay. Do I have a second? So Brett, I'll second it. Okay, Brett and Cindy simultaneously. You guys couldn't have rehearsed that any better. <laughs> like synchronized okay. swimming. Uh, okay. Uh, any edits, comments on the minutes? Okay, hearing none. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes as presented? Aye. 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 This, is, this is Gina. I'm ab abstaining. Okay. Uh, any opposing, uh, abstaining? Gina and Sal. Okay, thank you. All right, all right. Next on the agenda are school issues. Uh, first is a update from the Office of Higher Ed uh, with Sean. Sean, are you in? The, did you get in? Hi, Pat. This is Tim Larson. I think Sean is going to be a few minutes, and if I could just. Yep. Indulge with a statement on the status of Stone. I would appreciate it. Go ahead. Okay, thanks, Pat. First of all, thank you for having us. And again, thank this board for all of the hard work that you do in support of the nursing profession and in the state of Connecticut. We're very appreciative of your efforts. So, uh, understandably, after five months of waiting, we were able to finally deliver a product of of transcripts to students and we are still literally in the process. We started yesterday afternoon 
uh, issuing uh, updated transcripts, uh, summaries of them in a letter describing how we came about this, uh, this uh, project. And so we are still issuing transcripts this morning and um, uh, you know, we're working through that. Uh, so let me just read this statement. Yesterday, the Office of Higher Education staff began distributing st students their original stone transcript, their audit results, cover letter that explains how the audit was conducted. Students who have not already submitted a request for their audit results and transcripts can do so by going to our website. This morning, my office submitted to the board an audit summary report that was provided to us by the auditor. It's important to, it's important to stress that my office and the Department of Public Health used a very uh, broad interpretation of Connecticut's mandatory regulations when validating coursework clinical hours. These parameters were provided to the auditor. Teach out details are currently being finalized and students who are eligible will be contacted by the Office of Higher Education staff. Those who do not qualify will be able to apply to transfer to one of these three existing practical nursing programs. OHE will make sure that students are refunded for out-of-pocket tuition payments that are refundable under the law and know that options are available to them to complete their education as quickly as possible. So as you can imagine, this has been very, very difficult. And we've started this uh, down the road. We had, we had no idea how uh, dramatic the, uh, the actions were by Stone, particularly in the clinical uh, activity. And as you'll see, and I'm not prepared to go through the uh, audit today, but we will be uh, offering a webinar uh, sometime next week. We're trying to put all the partners together. That webinar will be folks from my office, the Department of Public Health, the auditor itself, the United States Department of Education, Griffin Hospital of Allied Health Careers, and Lincoln, Lincoln Technical Institute. So we're going to provide a webinar. We'll, we'll uh, email all of the affected students with the date and time and how to dial into this. In the meantime, we'll be taking inquiries uh, into our office and trying to do our level best to answer as many questions as we possibly can. So as of today, we will have all of the uh, transcripts available to students who request them. We are also working on refund amounts. We have what we refer to as out of pocket uh, students, uh, and we also have federal federally funded students. So we we will look to uh, return the out of pocket money as soon as possible. It was determined by the auditor that approximately two hundred and sixty three thousand dollars is eligible to be returned to these students, and we are working with the US Department of Ed to figure out what is the best avenue for students who want to have a loan discharged or continue with their studies with that. That's, uh, you know, falls outside of the responsibilities of this office, but we want to help guide students through that process to the extent that we can. Um, I want to thank Sean Seepersad from our office and Noel Kidney. We have been working daily on this for five months. I can't begin to imagine how each and every one of these students feels after receiving and being let down by Stone Academy. I also want to thank uh, Dan Shapiro and the Attorney General's Office, along with Elena Brickman uh, Goldstein. They have been uh, a tremendous help. As you are aware, uh, our office and the Department of Public Health have been trying to balance this to the, to the best that we can with the information that we have been provided with. And to that extent, we're going to continue to work diligently on this. We are uh, committed to providing information to the level that we can to each and every one of these students in an attempt to get them their money back, their transcripts in their hands, and then ultimately find a path forward for them through either the normal channels or developing um, the Teach Out program. And I'll just say this quickly. This is a little bit above my pay grade, but as you can imagine, we have a didactic portion of the coursework that was done and then clinical activity that was not followed up on. So trying to cultivate what might be a transfer or teach out scenario has been next to impossible. So we're going to try to figure out of the 
uh, affected students who is most closely to finishing their situation and we'll do uh, a skills and knowledge test with either Lincoln Tech or with Griffin Hospital to to make sure that they are prepared to advance and and handle it in sort of that fashion. We think that that is the most appropriate way at this point. Once we figure out uh, where students have decided to go, if students have decided to take their money and not continue, if students want to transfer to other schools, uh, you know, we want to be available to help you know, guide that process to the extent that our office can. There's nothing today that pro prohibits any student from applying anywhere. And now that they have uh, an audited transcript, I think they are in a much better position to make uh, an adult and professional decision on where their careers would lie. I would, I would suggest that we're going to get a lot of comments. We would prefer that those comments get handled uh, in writing so that we can be accurate with our um, our answers and have documented um, in uh, the incoming questions and the and the outgoing. And so to the extent that that is the best information I can give you, um, I don't know that I'm available to take questions right now. I just wanted to sort of give you a status update and uh, be aware that uh, any of the projected programs that we are going to put forward, we are going to uh, bring forward to this board to make sure that we are all on the same page. Commissioner Jahani and I are, are working hand in glove together to make sure that we protect the integrity of this license and that we have the best and most qualified uh, pool of candidates going forward. We're not going to cut corners and we're going to do, do our level best to reach out to each and every one of these students to make sure we can um, give them clear direction on the status of where they need to go. OK, so that yeah. would be my report. So now I, I think I probably have two students uh, who have raised their hand. Um, do you want to take their questions or you want to provide your uh, direct uh, email to contact you? I would suggest that they go to our website and um, and file their their questions there. And we will be reaching out to every single student that has received a, a transcript over the you know the last 24 hours. We've putting these things out electronically, and we will uh, forward them the information on the on the webinar. Okay. So would you give the address? For them okay, to. so it's uh, our website is www.ctohe.org. It is also in the chat. Okay, so uh, students, uh, I think um, unless it, your questions are to do with the, the nursing board, perhaps your best bet to get the information is to uh, contact the Office of Higher Ed. So I believe it was 10. Uh, they both unraised their hands, so I'm guessing they're going to be contacting you. Thank you. I, I, I think that that's the more appropriate form. Understand that there are about 800 students that have been affected by this. Um, yeah. It's difficult to answer individual questions in this forum, and I think it's more appropriate that we we uh, we take these offline and, and we will continue to work with students to the extent that we can. And any programmatic changes or anything along those lines, we want to work uh, with this body to make sure that we are all uh, headed in the right direction. Okay. Uh, Pat and Tim, uh, I heard Tim said he dropped his email in the chat. I'm on my phone. I don't even see the chats available or turned on. Can you just confirm that that's available for the public? We'll make sure we'll put that in uh, right now. We'll make sure that that is available. Thank okay. you. Now. Tim, you said something about uh, you were going to submit a report to the board. Say again. You, you, in your presentation, you said that the board would get some kind of report. Is that like? Yeah. So what? What okay. we're we, didn't we get have. It yet. Okay. Well, we we will make sure you have it today. Okay. It was my understanding that so when we we submitted a uh, a press release last night as well as the summary of the audit. And we will endeavor to give the board uh, the same um, 
information so that we all have uh, the same information. We're all working off the same uh, program. We'll get okay. that over to you today as well. I I thought that that had already been sent. Well, it might. I mean, uh, it might have. I didn't see it, but you know, I'm not on my emails 24 <laughs> seven. Well, well, we will I make sure as well. We'll make sure when we have the definitive date for the webinar that we'll we'll send it along to the board as well. And you certainly, okay. I mean, this is going to be targeted to the students who will have, you know, questions on refunds, questions on going forward, et cetera. But we'll endeavor to to include you so that if you want to dial in on that, uh, you're welcome to do that. Yeah, I think it would be valuable for us to know what's said to students in case you know. <clears throat> Absolutely. We get questions too so absolutely uh, so you know when we when we valuable. you know in february we had no idea th uh, the extent of what the predicament we were in uh, ostensibly <coughs> uh, we had extended uh, stone's authorization for two months with the understanding that we might have been able to capture this uh, prior to them closing but they closed uh, very quickly so we 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 did what we had to do, and I, I also want to thank you know my staff in the office of higher ed. Uh, we pulled 25 people off of other duties to scan and document and then also transcribe 800 files into a, a workable document so that we could get this out electronically to each and every one of these students. And, and uh, I think that these students should know that everyone in my office is working as hard as we possibly can to make sure that they're getting accurate information and so that they can make a uh, uh, an adult professional decision on what they want to do with the rest of their career. OK, and I want to thank uh, Helen Smith from um, our board. Absolutely, I forgot, I forgot, I Pat, I'm so apologetic. We would not be where so we are hard. today without Helen Smith. Thank you, yeah. thank you, Helen. Thank you all. All right, thank you. Any questions for Tim? Uh, on the Stone Academy issues. OK, hearing none, so thank you for the update and tell Sean, thank him um, for all his hard work, too. Oh, no, I have to on my agenda. All right, so next on the agenda is Albertus Magnus College. Uh, please introduce yourself to the audience. If you're from good Alberta. morning, everyone. Yes, good morning. Good morning. I'm the nursing director at Albertus Magnus College in New Haven, Connecticut. Okay, and your name is? Oh, I'm Jamie Sinetko. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Hi, Pat. I mean, we see Jamie S, but you know, we don't. Oh, yes, Sinetko. might not necessarily see who you are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mary, did you have a question? I'm sorry for uh, Tim. Uh, no, my question is for you, Pat. I'm assuming I need to recuse myself and leave the meeting. Correct. Just like so, you did in the last meeting. Yeah, so okay. I will leave the meeting now and perhaps someone will uh, notify me and um, let me back in. Okay. Cindy? Okay, I guess I'm going to do the same thing. This is Cindy. Right. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Diaz, you work for an educational institution? I'm the director of uh, Career Pathways at Griffin Allied Health. Well, that, uh, then you definitely have to recuse yourself also. OK, because I'm not an RM program. Well, <coughs> I, I don't know. I Attorney Schulman. And we're saying that the uh, Albertus Magnus College addendum is for the presentation of an RN program. Yes. Cool. So, Mr. D, uh, I guess it's Dr. Diaz. Congratulations. Oh, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> uh, so, does he have to recuse himself as an educator? Well, let me ask you, uh, Mr. Level? Diaz, I know you've, can't, you've come on belatedly. Um, let's get down to the very basic. Have you had the opportunity to review the packet? I read everything last night that I was sent. Yeah, so I read the packet. Did you okay. read the I just wanted to make sure this wasn't even a basic abstention. But okay. he, might, um, he might have not read the original presentation. Did you get that? The the actual feasibility study, not just the addendum? Yeah, because this is the addendum. I read the addendum. Yes. Okay. I was, I, okay. I was on last month's call for the discussion of the feasibility study. 
Okay. Oh, I, have, I, I would like to, I, I, I would advise you to at, at a minimum abstain. Okay. Okay. Um, at, at this present time, and, and um, I'm going to look a little bit more into whether it makes a difference whether you're in an RN program or not when the program itself is an RN program. Just to be clear, I do not teach at Allied Health. I'm doing their career pathways. So like um, helping students uh, go to find LPN to BSM programs or our LPN to ADM programs. So I'm not a teacher at Griffin Ida Health. I'm not a professor. Yeah, but as a matter of like antitrust issues, we just like yeah. to make sure that there's not someone voting on a competing school. So I yeah. don't know if it gets down to something as basic as uh, RN versus LPN program. Um, but at, that's something I have to dive into a little bit further. But at, at the moment, I think it's best that you abstain. Absolutely. Okay. All right. This thank is, you. Uh, thank this you, Attorney Shulman. This is Gina. Just for clarification, and uh, Attorney Shulman, let me know. Um, I am teaching at the University of Massachusetts, which I've taught at as an adjunct for 10 years um, and not teaching for anyone in the state of Connecticut. Any yeah, academic. That's is that, that is, okay? Yeah, am I okay to stay on? Correct. You, you'll be fine. <laughs> no You're need fine. for abstention or recusal. Okay. Pat, this is Jason. I'm not, I'm going to recuse. Yes. Thank you, Jason. You're welcome. All right. So, uh, uh, Ms. Smith, do you want to provide your summary? Good morning. So, Albertus Magnus provided an addendum as requested for the approval of their feasibility study and a proposal to offer a Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. So, each board member should have gotten the either hard copy or electronic copy of the in initial feasibility study and proposal to offer a Bachelor of Science in Nursing program that was discussed during the last board meeting. So, they did provide the addendum that was requested. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Simco, did I do it? Simco? Sinetco? Sinetco. See, I knew I wasn't going to be right. That's uh, okay. Could you just give us a little uh, overview? Do you want to emphasize anything in report specially, or does this report speak for itself? I, I do believe it speaks for itself. We are all on campus committed to meeting and exceeding all expectations from all um, all standards and our future professional accreditation that we would like to seek. And so I do believe everything is in the report. Um, we would love the opportunity to bring um, Ms. Helen Smith to campus as well. Okay, thank you. So do I have a motion? Uh... Let's see how should we do this? So we did not approve the feasibility study last time, and we asked for additional information. So do I have a motion on the um, scope of the addendum and how we want to? Does that move to? Do I have a motion on the feasibility study, including the uh, the uh, addendum? This is Lisa, and I make a motion that we accept the feasibility study that was submitted, including the addendum for Albertus Magnus. Thank you. Do I have a second? Thank you, Rebecca. Rebecca seconds. Okay. Discussion? Questions? Be sure to unmute yourself. If you have questions? Well, I guess, I guess I have some questions. So in your body, uh, in your addendum on page five, you talked about yes. we should look at page 33, but is there a document we haven't received yet? That no, that's from the final, I'm sorry, that's from the final binder. That's the original one that was sent to everyone that is referencing um, in the original 192 page binder. That is page 33 in there and I can um, go to that for you. Um, because I don't, because you broke up your document certainly into pieces, so I don't have a page thirty-three or a page forty-nine. Um, it was put document. in a one. 
it was put into one final PDF where it's all in one for 192 total pages. And it uh, page 33 talks about how um, the simulation lab has um, is going to be the skills lab. There's there is two spaces, but we have the opportunity to move mannequins and use beds and stretchers for um, uh, for skills classes. And so that was okay. that's just described there. Yeah, I thought your skills update was perfectly fine. Oh, good. Okay. Thank it, you. It, yeah, it was perfectly fine. It's just some, I, yeah. I don't have a page 33 or. Oh, that's, yeah, now. that's all it's referencing. That's the way your page um, didn't come in the paper form because I always demand paper. So I thought that was a very good descriptor, what was Thank going on. Um, uh, I guess my biggest concern and I'm not sure you can speak to this, was when I looked at the org chart on your yes, agenda. Certainly. Uh, your vice president for academic affairs has 18 direct reports. Correct, correct. That's the structure that's always been in place. It is a small school. Now I can assure you that this director is someone that I talk to almost daily if I need to. It's a very accessible um, person who has nursing as their one of their most important um, topics right now to, of concern. Yeah, and I thought your description of why nursing was you were surprised that it wasn't there to start <laughs> kind of thing. Certainly. I thought it was a very good comment also. So oh, I'm thank you. I'm sure that you have access to your uh, your supervisor. You know, oh, yes. 17 other people that report to yes. you directly. Yes, so most certainly. Yeah, it's just a large number of direct reports. Um, yes, most certainly. Any other comments from board members? Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve the feasibility study for Albertus Magnus new uh, BSN program. Do uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I heard two male voices, but there should only be one. Brett, aye. Okay. Okay, uh, opposed. Maybe that'll be easier. Okay, and abstaining? Mr. Diaz, you're abstaining. Yes, I'm sorry. I was trying to find my mute button. Yes. OK, all right. OK, so uh, the motion carries. Congratulations. We look forward uh, to Helen's report um, and then the approval of the program. Thank you very much, board. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, Pat, this is Helen. So are you going to um, vote on the proposal to offer the program because that was um that was not approved last time okay so i just right, want to so make sure because i won't go out into the field until that's um okay. i will go out into the field but i i need to make sure that their program is approved okay so do i have such a motion as indicated by uh, ms smith <laughs> They always used to do this, set, you know, in two pieces. Now they do it sort of combine it, which makes sense, I guess. But I always forget the second part. So I have a motion to approve the new program. This is Gina. I make a motion to approve uh, the new program of a Bachelor of Science in Nursing at Albertus Magnus College. Do I this is Brett. I'll second that. OK, additional comments or discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Abstain. Thank you. All right. The motion passes. Con passes. Congratulations again. Right. And Thank we look you. forward to Helen's report and um, your new program. Okay. OK, next on the agenda is the community college Connecticut State Community College noticed the merger of the 12 community colleges. And I noticed a lot of people in the audience. So please introduce yourself. We'll start with. Uh, can we text the program and have them come back on now? Yes. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, they did send us a
Okay. I don't see them back yet, so we'll wait a few minutes. I don't know if Diane has Cindy's number, maybe. I don't have her number. Let's see. I am looking for Cindy's number now. This is Cindy. I'm back. Someone just texted me. All right. So, okay. Thank you. So, uh, Jason and uh, Mary. Mary's waiting in the uh, lobby. This is Gina. I've just admitted her. Oh, OK, thank you. Cindy's back. Is Jason back? I just emailed her. I'm I'm sending a text and I don't see him. There's a circle with his name. This is Gina. There's a circle with his name on it. I just texted Jason. It's Mary. Oh, Mary, you're back. Okay, because I just yeah. Some... Him. No, and I, I just I, emailed him. I just came back. <laughs> okay. So next. So you can agenda, move forward. You have a form. Yeah. Uh, next on the agenda <laughs> is the Connecticut State Community College and notice of merger of the twelve community colleges, which affected the six nursing programs. So um, those in the audience, uh, the one. The program from the formal Capital Community College is someone from there on the call. Please introduce yourself. Yes, good morning. My name is Kathy Leary. I'm the uh, nursing director at Capital Community College. Oh, OK, Catherine, welcome. And how Thank about you. from New Haven campus? I guess that's why they're calling it, right? I don't know. Anyone from there? OK, anyone from the uh, Waterbury campus, Naugatuck, former Naugatuck Valley. Carol Gabriel, Naugatuck Valley. I'm here. Welcome. And from the former Northwestern, although I believe you're still being called Northwest. Connie. Hi, good morning. Um, Connie Hatchkiss um, from CT State Northwestern. Oh, it's Western. OK. Yes. And from the current Norwalk program. Yeah, I don't think um, Ezekiel was able to be here today. Okay. Um, from Norwalk, but I think Barbara uh, McFarland from Gateway was on the phone, so I'm not sure if she was able to unmute herself or not. Uh, uh, yeah, I was having a difficult time. This is Barbara McFarland from Gateway Community College. Welcome. 
And I believe uh, Cynthia. Yes, okay. Cynthia Arpin, Director of Nursing at Three Rivers, Connecticut uh, State Three Rivers. <laughs> this is uh, just an FYI, is it not, Helen? So there is there any re there's no vote taken, so I don't think Cindy needs to accuse herself. Um, yeah, it's just an FYI, the, the notice of the merger, because each I think each is going to still um, it'll be merged, but each location is still going to have its own nursing program, own accreditation and NCLEX code. Yeah, yeah. OK, so uh, you do have a summary. Um, Pat, can I just interrupt? I'm um, sorry. We also have Paula Dowd who is the Dean of Nursing and Allied Health for the system. Okay. Here Good today. morning, everyone. Welcome. Are you, can I see, I can't see you, so I, I still My don't. camera is on. I don't know why you, I'm here. Um, oh, there you are. There <laughs> you are. <laughs> here I am. Yeah, that's right, because you were on before, and I'm thinking, why is she standing, sitting in front of an escalator? And then I realized <laughs> it's probably a blind. <laughs> yeah. But it looks like an escalator from our perspective. So go ahead, Helen. Okay. So the Connecticut State Community College CT State Notice of Merger. As of July 1st, 2023, 12 community colleges in Connecticut merged into the single institution of Connecticut State Community College, CT State. And each former college campus, in each former college will become a campus location. Each nursing program will continue to have its own unique accreditation, Commission for Education in Nursing, ASIN accreditation, and NCLEX code. The role of the nurse administrator is unchanged, and the nurse administrator reports to the Connecticut State Academic Dean, Nursing and Health Careers, Dr. Paula Dowd. Capital Community College, Gateway Community College, Naugatuck Valley Community College, Northwestern Community, Northwestern Connecticut Community College, Norwalk Community College, and Three Rivers Community College provided their substantive change reports to ASIN um, with this informational packet. Thank you. Uh, does anyone want to emphasize or point out anything to the board about this FYI information? Have, have the the reports went to ASIN. Have you heard back? Um, yes. I heard back already at Naugatuck and it was approved. Okay, good. Same at Northwestern, Pat. All right. Three Rivers as well. I have not Gateway heard is back still from. Waiting. Yeah, I'm sorry. Capital's still waiting. That's okay. Who's waiting? Gateway? Capital? Gateway. You're waiting. And, and I know Nor Norwalk was approved also. All right, so I believe just to uh, complete the packet when you get your approvals from ASIN, uh, just be sure Helen gets a copy to put in the file, just so we know. Will do. Everything's been approved. Okay, I know that's been a lot of hard work, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> Since You have no idea. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, yes, she does. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was involved in all that. I so, uh, excuse me. I have to hop off. The building I'm in is now having a fire drill, so I have to leave. Okay. Well, thank you and good to meet thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you, Patricia and good board. Time. Thank you. All right. Thank you, board members. I know it was a lot to read, but this has been in the works since 2018. So uh, it's been a while. OK, thank you all for attending from all the colleges. It was good to meet see all you and Again, um, hopefully we'll get together, or at least we'll know what's going on. Is that our little symbol now? The uh, we have a little symbol back there, the moose. Sorry, that's still my that's still my northwestern symbol. <laughs> I haven't changed it yet. <laughs> I'm not ready to give up our identity just yet. No, <laughs> we're all maintaining our individual identities. Yeah, it's it's going to be tough, I think. And you, know, everyone, the students will all call you by your old names anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The system goes to these name changes all the time. I remember when I was relatively new in the system, it was Connecticut Community and Technical Colleges, but that was too much. So they dropped the technical after the merger. Yeah. 
a few years after the merger. So now we have a whole new name to get used to. So at least Connecticut State is fairly clear. Just the, the addendum part is going to be not as clear. So is it Capital or is it Hartford? It's Capital. Still Connecticut capital. State at Capital. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, good to know. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank all you for so coming. much. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Uh oh. Next on the agenda is a Lincoln Tech. Oh, here it is. Lincoln Tech. Uh, please introduce yourselves if you're from Lincoln Tech. Uh, good morning. It's Patty DeLucia, Dean of Nursing for Lincoln Tech. Hi, good morning. I'm Deborah Little, uh, the Corporate Assistant Dean for Nursing at Lincoln Tech. Okay, welcome. Good morning, Ruth Sarah Mazzaferro, the Director of Nursing, Lincoln Tech Shelton Campus. I'm sorry, your name again? Ruth Sarah Mazzaferro, the Director of Nursing. Okay, welcome all. Are there just three of you today? Yes. Okay, well, welcome. Helen, you want to provide your report? And this was in our packet of information. Um, sure. So, so Lincoln Technical Institute is requesting approval for the corrective action plan for the Shelton campus evening group. The first time test taker and collects results were 73%. Identified problems include graduates delay in time to the NCLEX test in relation to their program completion. Increase in faculty turnover and faculty develop needs related to outcomes assessment and implementation strategies. Corrective actions include improve the process for submission of documents to the Department of Public Health, extend the license readiness advisor role for the evening program, orientation and mentoring for novice faculty, salary increases, sign-on bonuses, accessibility to resources, faculty education to meet needs in test development, item analysis, and teaching learning strategies that address outcomes assessments, use of ATI board vitals, continued use of virtual ATI, restrict the use of book test banks, Analysis of outcomes and curriculum trends over the last two years. Voluntary cap of 40 students per cohort and ongoing monitoring of NCLEX results. Thank you, uh, Ms. Smith. Is there anything uh, anyone wants to emphasize or point out or update? Um. So a few a few of the highlights that um, Helen mentioned. One uh, was the time to test, and that that was really one of the major things that impacted the NCLEX rates for this past year. Was that there was a cohort of what we call outliers. They they graduated January of 2022, which would have been the previous reporting period, um, but there was a group that really delayed time to test anywhere and it's on the action plan it was um uh, it was six months. i don't have the days in front of me but it was six months to over a yep. year oh i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead deb i'm just oh, oh, okay. um reinforcing yeah. what oh you're i have it. yeah 250 it yeah it was 256 days versus four, up to four yeah. so it was six we, months to was, over a year yeah and um without that group of outliers, uh, the June, we had two, during this reporting period, we had two cohorts that graduated, June and November of last year. And the June group did great, 90. So we, were, we, we really looked at the outcomes for each specific cohort, uh, graduating cohort. So the June grads were at 91%, only one was unsuccessful on NCLEX. And no, the November cohort did dip uh, to 73%, and you know, together that was 80%. So we really drilled down on time to test because of those January 2022 outliers. And you know, and we we know this. You know, optimum time is one to two months. And you know what what the data showed on which we put in the action plan is that 91% of those first time test takers were successful when they tested between one to three months, with one to two months being optimum. 
And um, over 60% of the first time failures tested between four to eight months. Um, so that reinforced, you know, what, what we suspected. And also, you know, we, we also compared New Britain and Shelton campuses um, to see what the differences are. And the one, again, that stood out was the delayed time to test, where at New Brenton, it was approximately two and a half months, average time to test versus Shelton, three and a half months. So, um, you know, we really, one thing that really has helped is uh, Ruth Sarah uh, worked and collaborated very closely with DPH. Um, uh, she started in the role last year as the DON, so being relatively new in the role, she really worked closely to make sure that on, on the school's end, we're doing what we need to do in a timely way with those applications so students can get, oh, I'm sorry, so the graduates can receive their ATT numbers, you know, at, at the optimum time. Uh, to avoid delay in testing, as well as extending the role of what we call this licensed readiness advisor to uh, ensure that the support that's being given by that um, LRA position is uh, equal on both the day and the evening uh, options of, uh, on the Shelton campus. Um, and also, Deb, I was just going to speak about we did have a May 2023 cohort um, yes. and they increased to a 46 day average in time to test. So the process is definitely um, getting better. The May 23 cohort is 14 students. Um, so far of the 14, 11 have past uh, and we have three outliers students that have not tested from that cohort as yet, but they're testing as early as two weeks now. Um, we had a few and uh, I, I concur with Debbie. I think Ruth Sarah's collaboration with DPH has really tightened up our time to test and we'll see that impact us in this coming year. Exactly. Thank and you. then thanks, Patty. And then the second big, you know, um, item that really stood out was the faculty turnover. So um, when we looked at that, uh, you know, pre-COVID or early, well, currently it's 12 percent, but typically pre-COVID, you know, it's about 14, 15 percent. So then in 2020, um, it started to climb a little, 18 percent. And then 2021, we had a 70, over 70% 70 faculty turnover, which was huge. And then 2022, you know, we, we put in some measures to try to get a handle on that. It came down to 33, which is still high, though. So lots of challenges with having that faculty turnover and trying to onboard and mentor. Um, so that was a really unfortunate, you know, um, one of the unfortunate results of um, what happened during that pandemic that really impacted the students. Um, oh, one other thing also I forgot to mention that January 2022 grad grade with that over the, the outliers, um, those were the students that actually started right at COVID, either February or March of the 2020 year. So we're still feeling some of the remnants of this, unfortunately, but we're happy that, you know, we we have proactively already taken a hold of this and our, um, you know, got on our turnover rate to last now to 12 percent and um, really making sure that the faculty are receiving all the mentoring and support that's required for them to be successful for student outcomes. And then the last area, um, Patty, do you want to add anything to that one or? Uh, no, I don't think yeah, I so. Think, yeah, I think we're good with that. And then the, the last big area that we looked at is really faculty development needs, um, particularly to outcomes assessment and implementation. Again, we did a, a correlation between New Britain and uh, Shelton and saw that um, we, we looked at how many uh, students are receive a grade of an A uh, throughout the program, and we correlated that with their outcomes on NCLEX. And interestingly, you know, as you can see on the graph in the action plan, that um, for New Britain, 
12% um, who failed NCLEX had received an A grade at some point. Um, whereas for Shelton, it was uh, 25%. 25%. Thanks. <laughs> it's hard yep. to talk, uh, speak, and, and read these numbers <laughs> at the same time. Um, and then of those that passed uh, for New Britain, uh, 25% no, uh, are given, or 30 are given uh, uh, an A grade, whereas almost up to 50% by Shelton faculty are given A grades. So we're really looking at, um, at helping to support the faculty in correlating um, um, how they're, you know, I'm sorry, in trying to really look at the rigor and validity of their um, teaching strategies and, uh, and learning activities and their uh, exams and final exams outcomes and correlating that with some bigger benchmarks to try to guide them in maintaining the rigor of their, their teaching. And some of the outcomes we're measuring against are the ATI proctor content assessments, the comprehensive predictor from ATI, and mountain measurements results. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I do uh, think, Deb, if I can, I do think that um, where we got so much information was on the instructor developed final exams for the courses that had ATI content exams. For instance, if you were to, to say fundamentals, um, we found a trend that, you know, the instructor developed exam averages were much higher than the level two ATI results. Where that didn't get realized is, you know, our, our ATI exams are a lesser grade weight than the instructor developed exams, but it was a really, I mean, as unfortunate as it was, it was a really good opportunity to teach the faculty and really get their buy-in that, wow, in fact, this is significant and it allowed us to, you know, on classroom observations, encourage the new faculty that they didn't have to teach everything that they knew, that they could really incorporate the NCSBN test plan and keep their teaching specific. To, to what the scope of practice and what the PN student needed to know. So we it was it was another process, another area of development for the new faculty. Um, and that takes reinforcement still. So every instructor developed exam now has to be submitted to Ruth Sarah um, for a review to make sure that the rigor is there and um, they're not using test banks or rote questions, looking at classroom activities to be sure they're including case studies and a more active environment um, and just really focusing on this new faculty. I mean, as, as horrible as the 73% was, and this evening program is 23 months long. So it really does take a long time. So looking at it, as horrible as that was, it also gave us a little bit of an opportunity. Um, Absolutely. As odd as that yes. probably sounds, because yeah. you you know everybody was a novice educator um, in many cases. Uh, so everybody was learning together and supporting together, and um, I think it uh, I think it really helped. Um, exactly. identified some of these testing issues. And, and thank you, Patty. Um, very sure. well said. That really was um, Huge. Um, a really opportunity uh, for us. But in addition to what um, some of the things were that we've done, but Patty mentioned, we also did a lot of faculty uh, training um, on different various aspects of this and also uh, at every meeting, you know, the the Ruth Sarah, the directors have monthly meetings with faculty, of course. So to really have faculty engage in sharing uh, best practices and, you know, different types of learning, uh, teaching, learning methodologies. Also, at the end of every semester, um, when there's that faculty meeting is to um, 
take have the faculty as a group look at what the ATI proctored content assessments are and and um, try to glean some you know analysis from that and then also on an annual basis um, to engage the faculty in analysis of the mountain measurements and CLEX results um, and correlating that with their their teaching as well and we just actually had um, uh, an all program uh, for all of our Lincoln programs. Uh, we had our annual um, outcomes assessment meeting last Friday where we all drilled down comparing across campuses um, uh, mountain measurement results for NCLEX and again best practice best teaching practices and so forth. Um, and we're and also we encouraging uh, the the end of term at the end of a term an individual meeting with each faculty member mm -hmm. to review, you know, any curriculum needs, what their concerns are, you know, what they could do better the next term, um, what was working very well for them. And I think that individualized attention in light of a new faculty is very important. You can take the ATI report and you can take the final exam and you can really do a deep dive, not only in a group setting, but individually. Um, so that's been pretty worthwhile as well. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so this was in our packet of information. Do I have a motion on this um, plan of action from Lincoln Tech for the Shelton evening program? This is Jen. I make a motion to accept the corrective action plan for Lincoln Tech Shelton Evening Campus. Thank you. Do Rebecca I have a second? second? Do I have a second? Rebecca did. Oh, oh Rebecca, Rebecca did. Sorry. I um, didn't hear. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Um, Okay, additional comments, questions from board members for Lincoln Tech? Yes, I, I, I have a question. Um, is ahead, Shelton Campus going to be one of the campuses accepting the possible Stone Academy students for Teach Out? Well, what we've done um, to date is we have accepted students that were in their first term um that hadn't really gotten grades so we're accepting what we've been able to do and contribute currently to um the stone uh students is to start them from the beginning um we're not at one point we came back to see if we could uh increase our starts. Uh, we had an action plan that identified 40 starts per cohort to increase those to help some of the um, Shelton uh, Stone students. But we decided when um, the best way for us to help would be to take the new students, put them in the program uh, together. And we worked with Amanda uh, Bell from Griffin. She and I have been in, you know, several meetings with OAG. Um, and I believe between the four programs that comprise the New Britain and Shelton campuses, I want to say that the number that we've been able to start so far, so far is 64. And in light, we were surprised by our NCLEX results, I need I need to to mention um, we had students that uh, you know there was especially from this November cohort and Rousseau can probably confirm this that they just wanted to try out the test and, and see what they would need to study. Others were coming to us for uh, you know NCLEX prep and. Um, they had already tested. Uh, so the NCLEX was a little bit of a surprise for us. So what we decided to do is focus on the students that we could start from the beginning, stabilize the program, have these meetings with the board, and then regroup to see what we could do to be um, helpful to the Stone students. We do, I mean, we an 11 year history, we have, uh, 297 students that passed NCLEX, 341 that tested. For we have an 11 year 87% average um, with our NCLEX results. 
it has only been since 2021. Um, we've, so we're, we're kind of, we're progressing, you know, under direction from a lot of different places for, for how to be most helpful with the stone situation. Okay. The, the only reason why I bring this up is one, I, I am approval of, uh, your, your plan and kind of giving them more time to test and all the supports that you're putting in. I think this is great. I just want the board to just recognize though, that, you know, the stone, students are going to add stress to uh, your current system. And so I think this plan is enough to uh, deal with that stress and hopefully get your numbers to where they're going. But it is mm -hmm. just something to note that, you know, um, this is these numbers are before the Stone students took the NCLEX. So I, I want to make sure everyone's getting the support they need for both the Stone and non-Stone students. And I think this plan is the right direction. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mary? Hi, uh, thank you, um, Brett. Great point. Um, that was one of my questions. Um, thank you for submitting a detailed uh, corrective action plan. It, it obviously um, is very well thought out. You've done a lot of analysis, as you mentioned, the Mountain Measure Report and your ATI numbers. Um, what I did was I tried to look at the website and saw that we did not update our board scores that were presented last week. So fortunately, I was able to find them on my downloads from my computer. So I want to take a look at the trends for your Shelton campus, looking at sure. um, the Shelton campus. And I also looked at New Britain. Um, so Shelton um, day program 2021 day. 58%, 2022 day, 59%, 2023 mm -hmm. day is 68%. So you've been on conditional status for two full years. Correct. Okay, so uh, 2021 evening, 60%. 2022 evening, you bumped up to 81%. Now 2023 evening down to 73%. So these numbers are very concerning to me, especially in light of bringing on Stone Academy students. Now looking at your New Britain numbers, these are solid um, numbers in the 80s. You know, granted there's some 81s and 82s in there, but 2023 day, 89%. 2023 evening, 85%. In reading your action plan, again, which is really detailed, I commend you on your work on that. Looking at that alarming faculty data in terms of your nurse faculty turnover and your comments yes. regarding novice educators essentially running the Shelton campus when your program had been on conditional status for two years. I can't help but wonder, looking at your New Britain numbers, was there any thought in taking those experienced educators from New Britain, some of them, and saying, hey, let's mix this up a little bit, put some of our novice educators in New Britain, I mean, it's too late, right? The barn door, it's whatever that saying is, right? So this is all hindsight. I'm just, I can't help but think because there's so much good in this plan. However, now, I, I mean, looking at these numbers, I'm saying, wait a minute, we're talking about two campuses only, but the same institution, you know, and then you say you're surprised at your numbers, but when we have all novice educators on a campus, I and we have a campus that's already on conditional status for two years, mm -hmm. I'm actually surprised the numbers went up um, on the evening program. Actually, was it the evening program they went up? No, the yes. evening came down. The evening went up last year, right? Yes. However, no, if no, no, you the reason the evening went if down, you look at the day two graduate. If you look at the two graduating cohorts from the NCLEX reporting period from 2023, we had 28 total graduates. We um, 
we are average for just our graduating cohorts is 80.77 and that's confirmed data that is that is we've seen the reports we were able to validate our self tracking so I, I do think we need to look at that. And Mary, I appreciate your comments. And there were still senior faculty that were left where a lot of the turnover was, was in clinical. Um, people that just weren't comfortable going out to clinical as early as we did chose to leave during COVID. Um, other situations were people that were had primary full-time positions really had to focus on their primary jobs and the illness within their families, and it became too much. And then lastly, we did talk about that, and the two campuses collaborate. Um, we did talk about that, but we really pull from two geographically different areas. Um, you know, up in New Britain, we're getting Hartford candidates, and we're getting candidates that way, and down towards Shelton, we're pulling from New Haven. So it, it didn't work out um, the way that we had, you know, hoped possibly that it would have. Um, people weren't looking to drive. I mean, there is about an hour difference. Uh, it's about an hour commute um, between the Shelton campuses, and that's without traffic over 84 to New Britain. Um, so I appreciate your comment and it would seem that that would, in theory, that that would have worked, but individually for the people signing on and that were already in New Britain, it didn't work. And New Britain, while, yes, I agree, they, they've stayed above bench and I actually have a sheet that lists from 2012 to 2023 uh, the days for all four programs, the evenings for all four programs, the days and evenings together, the entire four programs together. I mean, I have a worksheet that I'd be happy to send you. Um, they had turnover too, Mary. The, New Britain had turnover too. It was just they 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 uh, had had more stability from people that stayed in that area in so, the campus. So, so the question Mary's asking, what was the distribution of the loss between campuses like New Britain and Shelton? I mean, you had 73% oh. overall, but what was the difference? I think so that 73% is reflective and I should have I sh I should have mentioned this when um we pulled that data on turnover the shelton number is for days and evenings combined all the other mm -hmm. data that we presented was specific to shelton evenings um that particular uh data was um both programs and shelton combined yeah it does say that on the um on the table there also um I don't have the number for New Britain off the top of my head, but for, and again, thank you, Mary, for you know uh, appreciating um, the work that went into doing this deep dive to really um, try to get a handle on as as we've said and as Patty's saying, the reason we were surprised is because of the long term success uh, for NCLEX on both of these campuses. Uh, years that's uh, where we're experiencing something different that has not happened previously um, but um, because of the difference in outcomes between New Britain and Shelton that is why that was one of the measures that we really looked at to see what what was the differences oh go ahead Mary you have a the question. most evident thing were time to test and faculty turn um, yeah, Debbie, you're freezing on and off just to let you know. Yeah. Okay, I, thank you. Yeah. I hear that you're reporting the long term success, and I know that there seems to be this trend of schools giving, you know, numbers that maybe three years, five years, 10 years. But in our regs, we're still looking at um, one year first time attempt. That's what we're looking Absolutely. at. Absolutely. So we have Absolutely. to look at that. So yes. when I look at Shelton evening, 
I will say well, you know, this would be, these numbers would indicate to me that this program would come off the list of approved programs. If you look at our performance during the 2023 reporting period, we are at 80%. Um, not on this sheet because of the January outliers. Exactly. So and I also why, think yeah. like here we are in 2023 and it's easy to say, OK, we're all the way staff. There's no faculty openings on Shelton evenings currently. We're moving along. We see the data trending upward um, and we feel it as well. Um, but this is and I know I know that COVID isn't a popular subject to bring up, but this is definitely COVID related. Um, you know, this is when we were front loading theory and this is when clinical sites wouldn't let us in and we were doing the 25 percent simulation. I mean, that now is resolved at, for us moving forward. And Absolutely. I think it would be remiss. And even though unpopular, I think it would be remiss for me not to point out that this program is 23 months long. And if you look at the grad dates of June of 2022 and November of 2022, and it wasn't a large sample, it was 28 graduates between those two cohorts. There literally was um, only of, of these, our numbers are 22, 22 passers and I wanna say five failures. Um, I apologize. Did I say evening? I meant to say day. It's yeah. day that it, it's day, not evening. I apologize. Yes. Twenty two okay. in yeah. evening was eighty one. I, I there's so many numbers right in front of me. It's the day program that this would be the the third year yes. that you're Correct. below. Yes. I I apologize for that. Okay. No, please. Um, I'm I'm. We're open to the so, discussion. Yeah, yes. it is your day program that this would yeah. be the third year in a row. It, it, day program is, yes. I have numbers of 21.58%, 22.59%, and 23.68%. Yeah. And I think so, we're in a climate right now where we need to be really careful um, in terms of making sure that we are holding our programs accountable because we have students out there who are looking for quality programs. And I'm not saying you don't have a quality program. I just told you that your corrective action plan is very quality and I've known you for a long time, Patty. I think you're a quality <laughs> educator. You know, Thank I, you. I understand there are extenuating circumstances. It's just that when students are looking for programs and they believe that they are a, approved by the Board of Nursing and yet they have fallen <coughs> below the standard like this. These are alarming numbers um, and we continue to uh, keep these programs on our approved list. Um, and these numbers are, are not even available to the public, right? I asked for them to be posted last month. They're still not up on the website. So students can be enrolling in this program. Um, you know, I think we have to be really careful about what we put our stamp of approval on. So I'm just not comfortable at this point, even though, again, I, I, I think you've done a great analysis. Um, I'd love to see your numbers come back up, but I'm I'm that's just my my feeling. Other board members, I'll let you talk. You may feel differently. Go ahead. Uh, other comments from board members? Well, I I, I just want to clarify something. I think you, um, in some ways, um, Mary, you're uh, you're confusing day and evening program, and I believe. This is for the evening program, which is, like is. the last time was 81, yes. now it's 73. And so the day program is another whole question, which will be coming to the board, I assume, in the near future yes. about what we're going to do about that program. But don't mix the two up. Remember, they have specific different oh. NFLEX numbers. And I believe Thank you. we will have Thank a you. hearing 
about the day program in the future Correct. about what the what this so let's not mix the day and the evening together so i'm very just, sorry yeah this is that's just okay. and the action program. plan very is specific sorry. Yeah, this action this plan is specific, specific to, to evenings. evenings. Okay, yeah. I'm very sorry. In everything except for faculty turnover, the, yes. the numbers for Shelton days and evenings are combined. Other yeah. than that, the data for evenings stands on its own. And just so that you know, I, and I'm sure that I've said it before, but we are trending up. I mean, I do believe yep. that okay, this so will I take care of itself. Okay, then yes. I would approve the action plan, but on the condition that the Stone Academy students are. Um, as Brett had, I, I think Brett, I, I don't want to speak for Brett, but it sounded like he was not comfortable with adding them in. And I, I would have some hesitancy in that only because you have a lot of work to do with this program. I have but some hesitancy see there too that was but the purpose was behind them. capping to 40. yep yeah. we, we are looking for only stability only as well they're only this is gina so they're not yes pat you're risk. correct they're taking new students who Listen. happen to be at stone so it, it's not going to be uh it's detrimental i think and with what i've heard about where the stone students are they're only taking them as new students with i think um, keeps them, it's their students. They're not going to have a stone number or NCLEX number. They're just going to be Lincoln Tech. Cindy, you have yes. hand up. So, oh, yes, I just wanted to um, just add in that I think that this plan is very thought out, well thought out. I think it looks solid. Um, I feel confident um, in your success. And I also wanted to say um, to your point, Patty, as, as sick as we all are of hearing about COVID, you can't ignore it. It it's no. through our nursing programs for a loop for the last few years, and we're still seeing some residual. So exactly. I definitely empathize with you on that. Um, but I wish you yeah. the very best, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing about fabulous outcomes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. This is uh, Gina, and I just want to make a comment. I also very much support your corrective action plan uh, for the evening program. And I, I understood that it was the, again, the new students, just to clarify, in case I have this wrong, from Stone. So again, I, I think that makes sense. The Stone Academy new students need to go. Yes. Oops. You froze, Gina. Oh, I froze. <laughs> oh, there we okay. go. Go ahead. There you go. Okay, so your corrective action uh, plan is great. I was saying that, but the Stone Academy students need to go somewhere. And obviously we are hopefully approving this corrective action plan. They're new students of so putting the whole package together. I, I totally support yep. it. And, and our, uh, the new Stone students meet all of Lincoln's admission criteria, their entrance exams, everything that any applicant that would come to one of our programs um, has to go through as far as admission requirements. Any new student coming from that was previously at Stone is doing that. We're not doing transfer credit for, for that specific group they're going through as any other admission would. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, yeah. thank any other you. Comments from board members? Okay, hearing none. So we have a motion and second to approve this uh, corrective action plan for Lincoln Tech's Shelton evening program. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? abstaining okay here none congratulations on this plan all for the uh, evening and thank yeah. you thank you pat oh. this is oh. helen so yeah. i i know that last month when i uh gave the the data uh for the n class and collects test results, and then each school will be presenting that did not meet the minimum uh, requirements. Right. So at this time, do you want to then place them on conditional approval, or do you want, uh, and, and I don't know if that has to be separate, but so we know they have an action plan. We know they did not meet the 80%. Yeah, 
Yes. So do I have, thank you, Helen. Do I have a motion to place the Sh Lincoln Tech Shelton evening program on conditional uh, approval? This is uh, Gina. I make a motion uh, to put Lincoln Tech's evening Shelton program on conditional approval. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Cindy, Lisa. I'll second. That Cindy, comments, discussion? Okay, all in favor of placing the program on conditional Shelton evening? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstaining? We're about to go for so, uh, yeah, I'm my picture some. Mm -hmm. Okay, we hear some background. Okay, all right, so congratulations on your action plan approval. And Thank you. Conditional, so I know you have a lot of work ahead of you. Um, but I think this is a great start and I have to agree with other board members. I thought it was a very well thought out, uh, detailed um, mm. plan. And I like the faculty development piece that you put in, I thought was very valuable strategy. So thank you for that. Thank and you very you. much. Bye bye. Do we have any timeline, Helen, on the day program? Um, that would come from the hearing mm -hmm. office, so I I, ha I have not heard anything yet from the okay. hearing office about when okay. their possible hearing will be. Okay. Nor have All we, right. just right. to let you know. Okay, thank you. Uh, we haven't heard anything then, I guess, either. So, okay, okay. well, enjoy the rest of the summer. Well, I thank you. In August. I guess it'll stay yes. in summer in August, right? Okay. <laughs> thank well, you so we'll much. see you there as a, as a visitor. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Okay, uh, it's almost. Uh, Pat, Pat, and Helen, I do have to step out. I will message you when I come back in. Will you okay. still have quorum if I step out? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you, Britt. Uh, so at this point, uh, I believe let's take a 10 minute break uh, and then we'll come back at exactly 10 30. And then we'll start with the, the next item on the agenda, which is Porter and Chester Institute. Alexa, set an alarm for 10.30. Alarm set for 10.30 a.m. We hear you, Lisa. You do, don't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you.
Nobody's talking yet, though. Let's see. Uh, I see Cindy, I see Mary. Uh, Rebecca's gone. Gina, are you back? Jason? Jen? Okay. Oh, Attorney Schulman's back. This is Gina, I'm back. Okay, good. Um, I believe Rebecca stepped out. Oh, Diane? She did, and I don't see that she stepped back in. All right, and Brett also. Uh, so I have Gina, Jason. Jen. We're just waiting for board members to return. Oh, where am I? Oh. Can you guys see me? I cannot. No? Oh, um, oh. <coughs> Apparently I would turn my camera off. Okay. <coughs> I have uh, Mary, I have Gina. Cindy and Lisa, but um, <clears throat> I don't want people to miss your uh, presentation, so I want to wait a few more minutes. Thanks, Pat. Lisa is in. Yeah, I know Lisa's here. I have Mary, I have Gina, I have Cindy, and I have Lisa. It's not a quorum, however. Jen, are you back? I see your square. I guess it's really a rectangle, but. <laughs> okay, uh, Jason, are you back? Okay. <clears throat> Diane, can you see if people are back? I mean, we don't have a quorum as it stands right now. I can't. I. Oh, hold on. Oh. I only see their um their circles. Yeah. But I don't see where they um uh, their squares. Yeah. Guests are waiting to join. Maybe they're waiting to come back. 
I don't. This is have Jason. Anybody. I'm here. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you, Jason. Jan, are you back? Oh, but we have a quorum now, so we'll go ahead and continue. Uh, Ms. Smith. Oh, I'm sorry, Porter and Chester. Those people from Porter and Chester, please introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Sherry Greifsu, uh, director of the program. Welcome, Sherry. Mm -hmm. And anyone else from uh, Porter and Chester on the call with you? Yeah, I have um, Lauren Cusaro, who's a campus site director in Waterbury. Okay. Anyone else? And um, Andy, uh, I'm just trying to think. No, he's not on. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. It's just Lauren and I are in the same office. Oh, okay. So Lauren and you. So welcome to both of you. And Thank you. Ms. Smith, uh, your report, your summary. Okay. So Porter and Chester Institute is requesting a approval for their corrective action plan for the Bridgeport campus day and evening groups, Hamden campus evening group, Rocky Hill campus evening group, Stratford campus day group and Waterbury campus day group. The first time test taker and collects text test results were 63%, 67%, 0%, 50%, and 68 respectively. Porter and Chester Institute voluntarily ceased enrollment at each campus for the evening groups and enrollment will not resume for the evening groups until there is an improvement in the NCLEX pass rates. The Stratford and Rocky Hill campuses are closed. Identified problems include included the graduates who tested during this reported period were enrolled during the height of COVID and their educational experience did not follow the normal path as outlined in the PCI curriculum. Excuse, excuse, me, excuse me, Helen. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but will you please mute yourself unless you're uh, speaking? Thank you. Sorry, Helen. Okay. <coughs> and corrective actions include additional remediation program was offered in April of 2023 opportunity for the students to attend the remediation programs, both in person and online, ongoing faculty assessment, providing faculty mentors to newer instructors, adopting Elsevier 360 platform as of July 2023, that is designed to build the student's knowledge, apply clinical judgment, and continually assess and review their progress, evaluate and review their progress, evaluating admission practices and ongoing monitoring of NCLEX test results. Okay, thank you. And uh, Sherry or Lauren, do you want to emphasize or highlight anything in your uh, presentation? Um, I sure do. Thank you for having us to be able to um, incorporate a, an action plan. In February, when I took on this role, um, we recognized as a group, leadership did, that we will, will be faced with the NCLEX results. Um, and uh, we immediately started looking at all of the things, almost doing a status update, a current status update, and looking at the gaps. We um, began hiring qualified instructors, looked at our orientation program for them, and with Helen's help through our surveys, um, she recognized that we uh, needed a more robust orientation program, which we implemented as well. Um, and then we looked at our curriculum. We also looked at the available clinical sites. And somebody did ask um, when Helen mentioned regarding um, the program didn't follow what was in the syllabus or the curriculum. With COVID, we front loaded everyone's didactic. They took all their courses, but because of the lack of availability of clinical sites, they were delayed in going to clinical. So in February, we went in overdrive and obtained really nice uh, with contracts in place, clinical sites for students. We were very flexible. We identified every student that needed it from level one to higher and um, the clinical staff that we hired and the didactic staff had good qualifications um, and experience. And we, um, we started in overdrive. 
So we um, we looked at um, all those students we placed in clinical at the avail the new available sites with the instructors, hiring qualified staff. We also created remedial education, not only for the one off and the students that requested it, but we identified students that needed the remedial based on each test results um, in each courses we offered in the evening and on the weekends. And we also created a um, review course slash remedial for those students that are were on the way to take the seminar. So it was a pre-seminar remedial, which is already in place, and then a post-seminar remedial for NCLEX preparation. And all of those courses, an abridged course that mimics the seminar and all the content and all of the um, program are um, administered currently to the students that require it. So we review their um, their ATI A's and B scores, as well as their performance. And um, we recommend that they go into these um, remedial classes so that they're better prepared for the NCLEX. We also recognized as we were looking at the data, which we did not present, but we have some data when we were looking at some of our sites, that those that were more successful did take their NCLEX within 90 days of um, leaving the program versus those that waited over. We also looked at attendance, call outs, people that were late, people that think that they're going to achieve their education by osmosis, by being in the room instead of actually opening up the book and studying and asking questions. So we also incorporated um, studying behavior notices as well as information. Uh, telling them in be uh, beginning of every uh, course what the expectations are. So, and then uh, our faculty and our even our program coordinators slash managers were presenting uh, one-off as well as small group educations to those students on evenings and on weekends to help prepare them for not only their um, ongoing testing within the course, but also for seminar and the NCLEX. One of the things we felt we were really missing and we reviewed was all the platforms to enhance the faculty um, development as well as capability of teaching um, and also the student resources. So we worked really hard and um, partnered with Elsevier 360, which has a phenomenal platform for education. They have great resources um, and they have the total package. So they have not only the books, not only the articles, not only the extensive nurse library, very similar to CINAHL, um, but they have the virtual videos, all the one-off um, citations and white papers and methods of delivery that a faculty member could use. Um, and they're helping us with building the, the content ongoing evaluation for all students. So we signed the agreement with them. So it, they have great resources and we have resources within the Elsevier, the, the faculty there to have that elbow support and ongoing support to all of our faculty to prepare our students for the next gen NCLEX um, testing. And um, from the patient scenarios, the um, the case studies, the the um, numerous amount of questions that they've developed to help us um, prepare our students. So it is a very fluid process. You could see by the um, the NCLEX review sessions, pretty much the process of how we're doing it. And I did explain it already, as well as um, the topics and the sequence, because more is always better than less. And um, we're identifying who we need to handhold and who we don't, but then we also recognize those that um, we all deserve to have great nurses and practice in the future. And if people are not willing to do it, then we help them make a decision on whether they wanna stay or still try. But we are giving people every opportunity um, and we have all of our departments working to support the student from admissions to financial counseling, to um, all of the instructors and all of the, the clinical sites. And we're very flexible with where, um, where they need to go um, and making sure that they're in the appropriate level. 
So um, I just wanted to make sure that, and one of the things I wanted to say is I appreciate everybody's contribution and questions because it, it validates what we feel as well and what's needed. Um, but we strongly believed that it's a combination of good faculty, good orientation, great tools, partnering with other people uh, to really help our students to be successful. And um, I think that is about it. And I welcome people's comments. And if you want even more in detail information. Pardon. OK. Oh, the, the other thing I, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that we are looking forward to. Um, we're in the process of looking at every piece of our curriculum and how we can improve that as well, working with um, Elsevier 360. OK, thank you. So this was in our packet of information there. Um, plan of correction. Do I have a motion? Let's see if I can get this straight on the plan of correction for the Bridgeport day and evening, the Hamden evening, uh, Waterbury day programs Do I have a motion. This is uh, Gina. I make a motion to approve the correction plan, for the Bridgeport campus day and evening, Ham Hamden campus evening, Rocky Hill campus and evening, Stratford yeah. campus day group, and Waterbury campus day group. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, hey, Pat, um, yeah, could I just, um, so, um, Pat, excuse me, I just wanted to mention that our, um, or should I mention it after they, you vote? Well, I don't know what you want to mention, so it's hard for me to decide, but oh. let's get a second and then we can have a discussion. Okay. Do I have a Thank second you. to that motion? Second, Lisa. Okay, Lisa, okay. Uh, I believe just to correct the motion, we are not looking at the Rocky Hill or the Stratford campuses. Because Correct. they have closed. They've been closed. Closed. Okay. And, then and the question then the question will be from me to Sherry is uh, what happened to those students and where are they now? Okay. And are they part of the group that we're discussing? Because that whole that whole thing is confusing to me. Right. You did a very good job about saying how many are left in every individual evening program. Um, but I still don't know the impact of the closures and where those students went and did they would what code do they use? Obviously, they use the old, old code. And do you still have people in Rocky Hill and Stratford that we're going to have to worry about? So I guess there's some clarity. So I don't know if that's a friendly amendment or you want to repost your motion that deletes Stratford and Rocky Hill. Yeah, let me uh, let me redo this. OK, all right. Yeah. So let's, this let's is be clear what we're yeah. talking about. OK, so it's very clear. OK, so this is Gina. I am making a motion to approve the corrective action plan at Porter and Chester Institute for the Bridgeport campus day and evening group, the Hamden campus evening group, the Waterbury campus day group, and I believe that is it. That is it. Oh, Stratford okay. day. Uh, why are we doing Stratford day, Helen? Let's see. I can, so Stratford, Stratford is a closed campus. Yeah, I didn't say Stratford, so I'm, I'm basically right. saying Bridgeport, they, they, yep. Bridgeport Campus Day and Evening Group, Hamden Campus Evening Group, and Waterbury Campus Day Group. Yeah, okay. Yeah, How correct. Is that right. And that the Waterbury Campus Evening Group, which again still did not meet. They, they, that's the third consecutive year, so they'll be addressed somewhere else in a hearing. Different so the time. Waterbury campus evening group will be addressed somewhere else. Yes. Okay. Okay. Do I have a second to that new motion? Lisa, second. Okay. Discussion. Questions from board members. Um, Pat, could, could I just mention a couple of things um, that you also, um, mentioned where the students were. So the Rocky Hill campus that's closed, those students had a choice to either go to Enfield, Hamden, or Waterbury. So they were placed there. However, when they did test, they were using the Rocky Hill number. Um, okay. The Stratford campus that closed, 
all the students went to Bridgeport. So that's um, that's that as well. And then the Hamden evening program, um, we were pro proactive and closed the evening program, no new students. And um, Waterbury, no new students on evening program as well. Okay. Okay, my, my question is, um, are there going to be Rocky Hill and Stratford graduates in this next cohort? Who will use those two codes? Yes. Those there might codes? there might be a couple a couple of one offs, yes. Okay. So we're still gonna see the data for those two closed campuses. Correct. And in our uh in our folder, um you know which you mentioned in the handout that we do have um, from Bridgeport, Hamden, and Waterbury anticipated graduation um, uh, How many? dates, but you know we do have still existing people from Rocky Hill and people from uh, Hamden in the evenings that are still in clinical that will that will be anticipated. So some of those students are in the Hamden and the Waterbury campuses as that were from Rocky Hill and Stratford. Okay, all right, so thank you. Uh, Mary, mm -hmm. you have your hand up. Hi, Sherry, yes. I Hi, Mary. Think, uh, um, so Sherry, your plan is um, essentially, look, looks like you're going to implement the use of Elsevier's 360, correct? Yes. Um, is This is will be new for you and your faculty? It will be. Would you like me to talk about the process and everything and what's going to happen? Um, that's OK. I'm, I'm kind of familiar with it. Um, what I would like to talk a little bit about is I believe um, we've discussed previous action plans in which you have instituted ATI <coughs> for your corrective action plans. Um, is that is that right? Well, we use the ATI testing uh, previously, but from July we will be using E360 because they have the HESI for the seminar and everything else. So up until July when we signed this month, um, we were using ATI, yes. So how long did you use ATI for? Uh, gosh, I mean, I didn't come on board under a year, so I know that we've been using the ATI for a long time. I okay. would like to explain a rationale for not using ATI and going with 360 if sure. you would. Okay, sure. so um, in previous uh, experience with Elsevier, I noticed that they had the whole complete package. Um, and I, I really respect ATI testing, but I felt that ATI testing was very heavy on testing. Students are great trying to memorize questions, but my my um, intention as an educator is to not only have them be successful taking an exam, but I want them to know the what, the why, the when, and the how, and the rationale. And ATI was very, very heavy on testing, whereas Elsevier was from the beginning of the learning, the durable materials, the um, documentation, the ongoing testing within each module, within each course, and with the next gen, all the questions are identified and case studies and the matching was with the and next gen. And I felt that it's one thing to pass an exam, but then when they're out in clinical practice, they're missing the critical thinking and clinical decision making. And I wanted more for the student. And so the multiple um, meetings that we had, reviewing everything, talking to all the educators, and um, even talking to some peers in other states that have Elsevier 360, I felt it was the best thing for us because it was so robust and what our program needs. Because realistically, when I came on board in February and speaking uh, very frequently with Helen regarding our test scores and everything, and then they came out in May, um, we knew we had a big um, hill to climb, and I felt partnering with E360 would really give the resources and the support to everyone involved, including the students. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a comprehensive product. I'm familiar with it. I'm curious as to the difference in cost to this, and, and is it being passed down to the student? Um, the um, the cost is part of their tuition. But the um, the cost is pretty much when, when I was looking at it, it was. 
we we got a pretty good deal with it. I, I you know, I don't want to share the, the the money or anything, but we did not increase tuition as a result of this oh, so at it's, all. It's bundled into their tuition. Correct. Okay. And and it didn't, you know, once it it did not increase the new the new students' um, uh, tuition at all. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, you you say that um, prior to this change, students were not taking any NCLEX style exams until the last term. So um, so with this change, they will start earlier. Is, right. is is a part of this, which is right. great. Um, so they'll have more practice. Um, the other thing you say in your plan is that you are going to start evaluating your admission practices so that those who enroll will be prepared for the rigor. Can you tell me where you are in that process? So we have met with um, we have met and evaluated the admission process regarding the qualifications of each student, um, looking at other schools, looking at um, you know test results and what their uh, T scores are and everything else. So we've already done that. But most importantly, what we've changed and started from last cohort in April to July is that we are including. Um, study behavior guidelines, clinical practice guidelines, expectations. We're really almost like, um, you know, like an in your face education every day and a reminder and supporting them. Okay, are you ready for class? Here's what you need to do. Any questions from last night? Any questions from last week? You're prepared uh, for the test next week or this week. So it's it's got to be a constant reminder with the students to make sure that they are front and center and present and our faculty have to be present and aware of the student condition as well so um that's some of the things that we've changed and then um the uh the, then you add when you when you have your everyday class your beginning of your class um the expectations. I mean, honestly, I know it sounds awful, but there are students that come to, you know, that sign up for new cohort, and then they think they don't have to come to school, and they don't understand the importance of hours of the program and didactic and the clinical hours and what that means and why they're signing in and out and why they have to make sure that they, um, one of the other things that we've done, which I failed to mention earlier in the discussion, is we reviewed all of our durable materials for clinical, not only the sign-in sheet, but also every required um, as patient assignment, their evaluation, their reflection, their care plan development and everything. And that is ongoing every day in clinical, which is matching the didactic. Whereas, um, Pat, you... Um, when Helen mentioned that um, our program process didn't match the curriculum, what happened during COVID is we front loaded all of the students didactic, let them take it. And then because a lack of availability of the nursing homes or the long term care or clinical sites, the students were delayed in clinical. And that's why we're in overdrive, making sure that everybody's getting what they need. Um, so now. Uh, we're able as a new cohort st um, starts that we're able to match their didactic with their clinical support, reinforce their skills list are matching, and the instructors are getting really intense orientation on how to use each um, each form, how to evaluate the students, and how to identify if there's an advisory alert that needs to be written down and what if there's a professional improvement, student improvement plan that they have to do. We're filling out those and we're being more proactive than reactive. Thank you. Um, and just to touch on, of course, I wouldn't be doing my education uh, role if I wasn't asking about our program quality indicators, right, um, Pat? So let me just touch a little bit on that. So your direct clinical hours and clinical experiences, you said, are, are back to normal. Students are getting their, their on-ground clinical time and face-to-face -face clinicals in. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yes, uh, in February, we recognize we had minimal um, clinical sites as well as minimal, minimal instructors. I mean, I was it was a joke that I felt like I was drinking through a fire hose for the first, you know, six weeks trying to figure out, oh, OMG, I've got to make sure I place these students. How do we build relationships and everything else? So we did that and we started um, in March getting really good clinical sites, working with our executive admin um, and leadership. And she um, is it's been amazing that we've built some really good relationships and have many clinical sites on days, evenings, and weekends, depending on when the students, um, you know, with their, sometimes life happens and they have to change things. And we're, we've been very flexible to make sure that they're still meeting the needs of their clinical hours. And we're even keeping track. We have our uh, program coordinators doing attendance and make sure our students are okay. So um, that that's part of it as well. Okay, and director turnover of these programs. How is your director turnover? Um, we well, when I came, we had um, uh, all campus directors are there, and um, I just slipped into the program in February. Um, as far as percentages, I don't know. I would have to get that for you. But um, the program coordinator, we did hire a good program coordinator for Hamden. Um, and uh, she just started, she's got over 10 years LPN experience uh, in as education. And then uh, Marianne's been in Waterbury. We had Jodian that um, just finished her education. She's in Bridgeport. She's working on her doctorate now. Um, and then we have Ann Sullivan, who's been with the company for a while, and she's the program coordinator. So we have more stability than we did before I came. Um, but I totally empathize with Lincoln when they said that they had a 70 some percent turnover rate in faculty. Um, it's like, you know, what ideas and creativity can you pull out of a hat to attract and hire great faculty as well as retain them? How do you keep them engaged? How do you make them feel good? Um, trying to improve communication, making sure the students here, we have newsletters going out every other month with the students, so they are up to date as well. And um, we're really very transparent with them with what the expectations are for their, um, for their um, experience as a student and, and what's required based on the, the nurse, the nursing requirements, as well as ethics of behavior as a student and a nurse. I mean, it's, it's like everything. If, if you throw it on the wall and it sticks, so there's so many facets to being a nurse and we have to many times educate our students on what it's all about. Yeah, on so top of a rigorous program. I'm looking to see about faculty a reference in your report. I didn't see it. Are at least 35% of your faculty full time? That's 30, 30. also. Um, Helen, I think you and I, what was it like 34% the last time we looked, Helen? I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't recall, Sherry, because I, yeah, I, I review I a lot of different programs. But I think we are at 34. Yeah. Okay, so, and my last question would be um, use of simulation. If you do use it, is your sim center certified or do you use certified faculty for simulation? Um, I don't, we only had one certified faculty in simulation, but we do have sim men and everything else in the lab, Mo um, moderate resolution, um, and we have some nice clinical experiences for the students. Thank you very much, Sherry. Um, you're welcome, Mary. Yeah, just to clarify, Mary, your question, based on the report we got in uh, May of 20, May 17th, 34% uh, of their um, faculty are full time. So thank you very much. We'll close to 35. Yeah, thanks for, you thanks might read that somewhere. Patience yeah. with my questions as well. Oh, no. Uh, Lisa, you have your hand up. Lisa? Oh, yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, so I tend to defer the expertise related questions about educational programming to the experts on our board, which I am not one of in that respect. But I'm just curious, not coming from um, a nursing background nor an educational background, but do you in your in your improvement efforts input 
in a formal way? Do you input students um, comments or do you have meetings of students or things like that? Be and the reason I'm asking is because we've seen with with well Stone, for example, it sounds like the students were not actively engaged in a real way in the school programming and yeah. it seems to be better to kind of get it going before you hit that catastrophe level so i'm just so, wondering take the what are, yeah what a great question lisa so one of the things when uh, when i first came on is that it was apparent we had to do better improvement with communication with the students and each other as faculty so that's one of the big things um, and then we have had some um, student surveys. And when I was looking at them, um, no, no surprise. We want to be informed. We want to make sure we're told what we need to do. We want to know what's going on with faculty and all of that other stuff. So we did uh, start immediately. I mean, I I went around as a director to every darn um, uh, didactic classroom, met all the students, asked them questions. What do they need? Um, what are some of the resources? And many of them said, we would like an NCLEX review. We'd like a seminar review. We want to have more newsletters and everything. So we started implementing that right away. So um, some of it was not rocket science, that it just common sense to do all those things. And other ones, if there was any issues with, you know, I can't get anywhere with financial aid, I don't know about this, I don't know about that, then at least I knew what I didn't know. And I uh, sought out my resources at the organization and referred them. And the students were slowly having their um, questions answered. Most importantly, um, during that time, Lisa, is that the students were frustrated. They were delayed in getting into clinic which was postponing their graduation date and you have you have to be really honest with them yeah it's it's terrible I'm getting sites I'm getting instructors you'll be the first to know um and I had everybody on speed dial as soon as I hired somebody and play some play someone then what we looked at those with the most seniority and put them in the clinical as quickly as we could if we had to change things we we let them know to make sure that they were getting what they needed Lisa, do you have additional questions? I've been having problems with my connection. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate what you're doing. I think it's great. I would love to see that part of a plan formalized and written into your plan so that it it kind of makes it more into the five years conscious. Yeah, um, because I think I think the students need to know that their 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 input is valued. I think that you know, just like we see with patients, where they're they're communicating more with their clinicians and they're creating their care plans, they have more invested in it in that way, and they're more committed to making it happen successfully. So I just want to suggest that that's something that you consider. I totally agree with you. And with the five-year plan that we're working on for submission in September, part of that is addressing the surveys and how we're moving forward with that as well. Okay. Okay. Other questions from board members? I, I, I guess my only comment, um, Sherry, is that I usually invite schools or who is ever presenting to sort of fill in sort of the blanks because sometimes you forget uh, to put it in your document and I wish that what you have told us today was in the document oh okay uh, you really filled in some of my questions uh, that weren't evident in the document Mm -hmm. uh, so when I read this, I'm thinking, no, you didn't do this. No, you didn't do uh, no discussion of faculty administration or the table they were. You had no, um, you didn't really talk about your curriculum changes. You just said you were changing. There was no analysis. You were just doing it. So it left a lot of room from my perspective of additional information that wasn't in the document. Mm -hmm. You provided a lot of what my questions were in your presentation. So I'm, I would have voted no to approve this plan the way it was written and sent to us. Um, you've made me feel that 
Port and Chester with your guidance and your leadership is really on, a, on its way to really fixing the problems that you've seen. I mean, you've been, only been here since February, but you're articulate about the, the uh, E360. You understand why that's important for students. You talked a lot more about the faculty development. You talked about your clinical resources and hiring faculty, but that's not in this plan. And unfortunately, whatever you said, and maybe you can review what you said on YouTube, should be in this plan. So right now, I'd have to vote no on the paper. Although, based on what you've told me, I feel much more comfortable about approving this plan of correction, but not this plan of correction, but the enhanced plan of correction. And I think uh, Lisa talked to that. I mean, you, you're you doing things and you're not giving yourself credit for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not in this plan. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you have a little bit more work to do and maybe you can dovetail with your um, your September, just sort of pull out what you're doing for your September self-study. But at this point in time, what we have on paper, I could not approve. Mm -hmm. However, what you told me today, I'd be more than happy to approve all the gaps that you filled in that weren't in this report. Um, so that I guess um, that's where I am right now. Um, so Pat, would you want us to go back and revise everything and then resubmit to you for the August or wait until September? Well, August is 9th, so that's not even a month. Uh, I'm not sure uh, unless you want to, you know, really look at your recording and make yourself notes. I don't know if we need an addendum or it, all those are going to be discussed in the self-study. And I don't want to have to do it twice if it's all going to be what you said today about student mm -hmm. involvement, the newsletters. I mean, that was none of that was in this mm -hmm. report. Yeah. Uh, your clinical sites, there was no discussion about that in here. Um, I, I think it's only fair if... Um, you just in include your plan of action as part of that self-study. I know it's specific for those particular campuses, which is what our motion was, um, but I suspect it's going to be a lot more detailed for your entire program. Everything you said today, you should have written down. Yeah, you know, it's funny, Pat, when you're in home care, especially in hospice home care, you have to be able to articulate in words to tell the story for Medicare reimbursement. And so you are validating that I need to tell the story of my summary and put it on paper because I wanted to set the stage for you just so you knew what we were doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know what works for you because our next meeting is August 9th. So oh, wow. It's, it's really fast. Yeah. Because it, because of the National Council meeting. Um, uh -huh. I, and I, and I, Sherry. I think, I think, go ahead, Helen. Uh, Sherry, this is Helen. So if you are going to present additional information for the August 9th, that information would be to be due to the department by uh, <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> the 23rd, which is this coming Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Because of so. the so just for your own information yeah, yeah um yeah. if it's and i don't know if pat if, if it's go. going to be the september how you want it to be if you you want it to be some portion in the actual self-study document or if you want it to be separate from the self-study document the board members Separate. since mm -hmm. since the uh, self-study will be presented September 20th. The board members will get either a, the electronic device of the five-year study or the hard copy of the five-year study delivered to them by August 9th. So either way, it's a very tight time frame. But again, um, I, I think, I don't know if you want the documents. I mean, it can be discussed during the, the September meeting, but it's not that's part not part of the five-year study requirements so i don't know how you want her to present that all right mary you have a suggestion yeah sherry just to make it easy um on you um i essentially read the program quality indicators from the ncsbn um, um annual report from 2020 to 2021 the aggregate data and you just answered them 
So, right. you know, you had it all at the top of your head. All you have to do is write it down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like we'll if, do. If we, if we could just, if we could decide as a, as a total package, the paper and what you said today, can we do that? Can we vote based on the total package? Attorney Schulman, does it have to be what's in writing? Um, I would suggest you wait until it's in writing. Okay. Because okay. we don't want it to come back at a later date that that's what you approved and there's no nothing but a recording out there that yeah. we'd have to reference. Okay. All right. So uh, let's do this in steps. So we have a motion and a second to approve the um, um, corrective plan for Porter and Chester that was uh, in our packet. All in favor of approving that? Opposed? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Opposed. Uh, abstaining? Brett is abstaining and I am back in the meeting. Okay. Sal, are you abstaining or did we lose you again? Um, I'm, I'm abstaining. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So the motion to the motion doesn't um, doesn't pass to approve this plan, which means the plan you need a new plan. Right. Uh, I think you're writing your self study. I would make it. Um, uh, I would make it a separate document, mm -hmm. specifically addressing the conditional issues uh, of those three campuses. Is it three campuses? Um, yep. I, yeah. I, I, you know, whether you put it in the back, whether you put it in the front, it would be up to what makes more sense to you. But I think now, Helen, we need to uh, put these programs on conditional pending uh, updated plan of correction, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we'll start first. Do I have a motion to place the Bridgeport programs day and evening on conditional approval? I make a motion to place the Bridgeport day and evening campuses of Porter and Chester on conditional approval. Okay. Do I have a second? Second, Does Rebecca. Cindy, I'll second. All right, Rebecca, Cindy, both. Okay. Uh, additional comments, questions, or discussion? Okay. All in favor of uh, putting Bridgeport day and evening on conditional? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Brett is abstaining. Sal. Lisa. You're abstaining, Lisa? Yeah. Okay. Sal. There seems to be some background noise. Okay. Uh, next is um, the Hamden Evening Program. Do I have a motion to place them on conditional approval? I make a motion to place the Hamden Evening Porter and Chester Institute campus on conditional status. Okay, do I have a second? Lisa, I'll second. Okay, all right. Um, additional comments, questions? Concerns? Okay, all in favor of placing Hamden evening program mm -hmm. on conditional? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Brett is abstaining. Okay. Sal's abstaining. Okay, thank you. And then, uh, do I have a motion to place the Waterbury Day program on conditional approval? I make a motion to place the Waterbury Day Porter and Chester Institute campus on conditional status. Do I have a second? Second, Jen. Second, Jen. Thank you. All uh, comments, questions, concerns? All in favor of approving the conditional status for Waterbury Day? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Brett, abstaining. Okay. Lisa, abstaining. And can I change my? 
Lisa, you just froze, so you can't do anything. Sal's abstaining. Sal's abstaining, okay. Lisa, Can my vote for the prior one be changed to abstaining? Yes. I was okay. wondering why you didn't when you abstained yeah. before. So. Okay. So um, that there's a problem uh, there, Kat. I'm sorry. I believe Lisa seconded the hand and evening. She seconded. Program. I did. I thought that I could do that, but still abstain. No. I know you wouldn't be able to do it with a recusal. Right. But I would not. just, I would just, uh, let. Uh, can we please have someone else second that motion? Yeah. Okay. All right. I have so a, a motion on Hamden Day um, made by me. Mary. Mary. Do I have a second? Jen. Jen seconds. Okay. So we're changing her vote for Hamden. So so. From approved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank now, you. I, have a, I, I just have, a, I'm a little bit confused here, um, Helen, Jerry. Uh, Rocky Hill, you put it in your summary, uh, is at 50% evening, Rocky Hill evening 50% and Stratford um, day at 43%. Do those, do those programs, even though they've closed, but they still have students have to go in conditional also? To be clean. Uh, so this is Helen. I don't believe so because there's no campus for them to make corrections with. Um, the the actual NCLEX program code generally stays open for 18 months. So NCSBN requests that when a campus closes. So if Rocky Hill closed at the end of um, October of 2022, the actual number for that campus will stay quote unquote open for 18 months. So if you have someone that graduated from the Rocky Hill day or evening group, they would still be able to test. If you close the, if NCSBN closes a program code prior to the 18 months, then when someone goes to test, they wouldn't be able to take the exam. So I, I think the same thing for Stratford. So the Stratford one should be, that number should be closing pretty soon. Um, yeah. But I think there's no campus for them to mm. change anything or because okay. there is no campuses there. So I'd say no, that they don't okay. need to go on conditional or otherwise because there's no campus any right. longer. Well, I just wanted to be sure, you know. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Again, if you had put in your report what you told us today, <laughs> it would have been a different vote, I believe, um, because yeah. I think you filled in a lot of the gaps that yeah. I had, a lot of questions I had. Um, yeah, and I promise you all this is being done right now, so and everything's set. But I will. I pro. I want to thank you all for your understanding and the opportunity to resubmit the um, the summary in on paper besides what we already presented you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank thank Warren also. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is Quinnipiac University. And I want to thank people for hanging in. Uh, who in the audience is from Quinnipiac? <coughs> Please unmute yourself. Anyone on the call from uh, Quinnipiac? You're muted. We can't hear you, Dr. Slater. We cannot hear you. We can see you talking, but we can't hear you. It's not muted. There's something else wrong with it. Check the sound yeah. on your computer. Make sure your computer is not. It yeah, may be the speakers on the computer itself. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's called for Lisa. <laughs> Perhaps he can uh, use the phone to call in, though, for uh, yeah. for us to hear. What What's the uh, number? Star seven. If you're having problems, isn't that the number? Star seven. On the phone when you can't uh, talk. If you're on your phone and All it's right, are muted, you able to hear then me? I'll stop. 
We can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Is that Dr. Slater? Right. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> so All I'm right. on the phone, but my video on this this computer, which isn't mine. <laughs> okay, maybe it's time to ask for an upgrade, huh? Uh, okay. Well, no, we had my computer would, wouldn't things. connect for some reason. <laughs> okay, so introduce right. yourself, please. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Larry Slater. I am the, the dean for Quinnipiac, pending approval here today. Um, started on June 26th. Um, I am uh, a graduate of the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Nursing for my BSN and PhD. Um, did a majority of my nursing education career at NYU in New York City, uh, two and a half years at the University of Memphis during COVID to be close to parents. And I'm now excited to be back in the Northeast here at um, Quinnipiac. So I'm not <laughs> sure, I know you have my CV, I'm not sure what you want me to cover yes. uh, in terms of myself. Okay. But I'm happy to answer well, questions. Well, we did have your everything from Quinnipiac and your CV in our packet of information and Helen usually does a summary of what's in the packets, at least today. And <laughs> uh, that won't be happening anymore, but uh, but I don't know, you pretty much said a lot what she was going to say. Do you want to, Kurt, you know, want to do a like a condensed version, Helen? Oh, okay. So, yes, uh, <laughs> Dr. Slater did review a lot of the information. <laughs> so, Quinnipiac University is requesting approval of the appointment of Larry Slater, PhD, MAC, RN, BC, CNE, FFAN, as a dean of the School of Nursing Effective June 26, 2023. Dr. Slater earned a Bachelor of Science in Nursing and a Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing from the University of Alabama at Birmingham in August 2008 and August of 2011, respectively. His clinical experiences include staff nurse in a neurosurgical intensive care unit at a hospital. Dr. Slater's educational experiences include adjunct instructor at the School of Nursing, University of Alabama at Birmingham, clinical assistant professor, clinical associate professor, and director of the undergraduate programs at Rory Myers College of Nursing, New York University, and clinical, clinical professor, associate dean for academic programs, and interim dean at Lowenberg College of Nursing, University of Memphis. Thank you very much. So you started to add things, uh, Dr. Slater. Is there anything else you would like to highlight? Uh, no, nothing in particular. I'm just excited to be back in the Northeast. I have many colleagues up here as well as in the state of Connecticut that I look forward to working with. And I do want to thank uh, the state of Connecticut. It was the easiest nursing license, I have to say, that I ever got. The system was very straightforward and quick. So thank you for that. Well, yes, I, well, that's not what my experience was in 1973, but maybe things have changed. <laughs> Yeah, so I want to welcome you. So we do I have a motion on the approval for uh, Dr. Slater to be the new uh, dean at Quinnipiac University? I'll make a motion to approve Dr. Larry Slater as the dean of Quinnipiac University School of Nursing. Do I have a second? Second, Gina. Gina. Discussion, questions, comments? Hearing none. Okay. All in favor of the motion to approve Dr. Slater as a new. Dean. I have a question, Pat. Oh yes, yeah, so go ahead. How are you doing, Dr. Slater? This is Jason, um, board Hi, member. Jason. Hi. Um, can you just tell me what your uh, current your master's degree is in? Uh, my master's is in accounting. That's what the MAC is. So with my okay. my work in nursing academia as well as. Uh, it's more family related because my family does real estate development and I was not happy with our accountants. So I did get that degree for kind of two reasons, one for professional and one for personal. So you have a bachelor's in nursing, uh, no MSN and a PhD. <clears throat> PhD and then that master's in accounting, yes. Okay, just making sure, thank you. Uh, I have a, I have a question. We, we won't let them get away too easy here. So All I right. see is... Uh, <laughs> 1989 is an intro to electrical engineering the worst grade you've ever received in your long stoic uh, academic history. Uh, it was, and it's that's an interesting question. Um, I went into chemical engineering because I wanted to make more money than my dad, who was an electrical engineer. Um, uh, not a good reason to choose a career. I'm glad that I'm in nursing now. 
Um, and so that was uh, his uh, forte. So I just kind of did not enjoy and kind of refused to attend class <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> since it was electrical. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah, that was my worst grade. Um, that was a bad, bad semester anyway. It was a summer semester too, I think. Mm. Interesting question, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions for Dr. Slater? Okay, all in favor yeah. of the... Oh. Did someone else have a question? No, okay. All in favor of approving Dr. Slater as the Dean for Quinnipiac University? Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Jason is abstaining. Jason's abstaining. Okay. Okay. Well, congratulations, Dr. Slater, and uh, welcome to Connecticut. Welcome back to Connecticut, I guess. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, next on the agenda is University of Hartford approval of appointment for the executive director and chair of the nursing department. Uh, and who on the call is from the University of Hartford? Hi, this is Edie Ouellette. Hi, Edie. How are you, Pat? Good. Anyone else there with you, like Chez or anything? Yes, um, I think she logged back on. Okay. Jez, you want to introduce yourself if you're there? Okay. I know she was she was heading over from another meeting to get back on. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and start. Uh, uh, Ms. Smith, do you want to do a summary? Okay. University of Hartford is requesting approval of the appointment of Edith Ouellette, EDD, MSN, RN, CNE, as the Executive Director and Chair of the Department of Nursing, effective July 5th, 2023. Dr. Ouellette earned a diploma in nursing from St. Francis Hospital School of Nursing in May of 1987, a Bachelor of Nursing Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Central Connecticut State University in May of 2001, a Master of Science in Nursing from University of Hartford in May of 2009, and a Doctor of Education in Nursing from Southern Connecticut State University in December 2019. Her clinical experiences include staff nurse, charge nurse, and educator in neonatal intensive care units, intermediate cardiac care units at various hospitals. Dr. Ouellette's educational experiences include Associate Professor and Division Director for Nursing and Allied Health at Three, River, Three Rivers Community College and Dean at Glenn College of Nursing in Virginia. Okay, thank you. Uh, Edie, is there anything you want to add to that <clears throat> summary? Um, no, I'm just glad to be back in Connecticut. <laughs> okay, so this was in our packet of information. Do I have a motion on this request? to approve Edie, uh, Edith Ouellet as the uh, executive director and chair of the nursing department at University of Hartford. I make a motion to approve Edith Ouellet, EDD, MSN, RN, CNE, as the executive director and chair of the nursing department at the University of Hartford. Okay, <clears throat> do I have a second? Second, Gina. Yeah. Okay, I see uh, Ms. Thompson has, Dr. Thompson has come on. Is there anything uh, you want to say on behalf of uh, your proposal? Sure. Oh, sure. Hi, Pat. How are you? Fine. How are uh, you? Yes. Uh, we are very pleased to have Dr. Willett join us. Um, she is uh, well known in the state. She's also one of our alums. So we are very, very fortunate to have her join us and back in the state. Okay, thank you. So questions uh, for uh, Dr. Uh, Ouellette or Dr. Thompson? Okay, hearing none, we have a motion and a second to approve uh, Dr. Ouellette as the new director and chair of the nursing department, University of Hartford, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, I'm sorry. Opposed? Abstaining. It was unanimous. Congratulations, Edie, and welcome back to Connecticut. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for uh, waiting. 
all this time to get your approval. Sure. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Well, expect to see you sometime. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chaz. <clears throat> okay. Next on the agenda are uh, will be the discipline part of the agenda. Uh, memorandum of decision for Sarah R. Zoni, RN is Ms. Zoni or Council for Ms. Zoni in the audience. Hearing none. And for the department. Oh. Linda Pizzina for the department. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so this was in our packet of information. Do I have a motion to approve? <clears throat> This MOP as presented to us on Sarah Zoni. This is Jen. I make a motion to approve the MOD for Sarah Zoni RN petition 2022 Okay. Second, Mary. Second. Second, Mary. Okay. Discussion. Uh, this was a culmination of a consent order back from October of 22 and then. Constant violation, uh, another summary suspension, and then revocation for failure to comply with that consent order. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, any other comments? Okay, all in favor of approving the uh, MOD for Sarah Zoni? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, I'm sorry. Opposed? abstaining. It was unanimous. <clears throat> Next on the agenda are motions for summary suspension and the first one is Michelle E. McDonald. I believe attorney Shulman that documents were sent late last night that I have not seen as yet from counsel from uh, respondents counsel. So how do we proceed? I, I have not seen those either. So um, my understanding is they are uh, an objection to the summary suspension. Um, let's see. Okay. Is While that you're looking at the documents? Well, you're that, looking at so, yeah, I don't. I, yeah, and a motion to steal the exhibits and exhibits in support of their objection. Is that the 350 so they're on the secure website? So right. they should be there. Well, they're there, but they were there at 730, I, I, you know, or eight o'clock. I haven't had time. <laughs> they weren't filed in a timely manner for us to review. Um, so is mm -hmm. Ms. McDonald or counsel for Ms. McDonald in the audience? Please introduce yourself. Please unmute yourself. Yes, my name is Steve Manning. And I am appearing on behalf of Michelle McDonald, who is present and seated to my left. Right. Uh, uh, I, I, I apologize for sending my email at 638 last night. The documents that were sent to me were emailed to me on Friday afternoon. I was able to access them on Saturday. And I spoke uh, with attorney Newton on Monday. The first thing I asked uh, was uh, I made a request to postpone this matter. And uh, that request uh, did not succeed. However, I would make a request now a motion to postpone this matter so that the uh, <coughs> board can review the materials that I submitted in opposition in objection to the motion for summary suspension. Attorney Schulman. Is that well, you need me? to. Uh, yeah, I think the board should take the time now to review the documents. Um, you, do? you know, but the bottom line is in accordance with the statute, you have to make the determination as to whether or not she poses an imminent danger to um, the citizens of Connecticut. That's the bottom line. Um, regardless of whatever objections are there. So right now we have a motion for postponement. So I need someone to make a motion to either grant or deny that motion for postponement. This is Jen. And also, I think, let me just say, Attorney Newton, first. are you on? Is Attorney Newton on? Attorney Newton? I see her name. 
I just want to make sure she has her say. I see her name. <laughs> Attorney well, Joelle Newton. Okay. So Mary, you have your hand up while we yes. wait for Joelle. Can I please ask, there was one packet put up last night that is 315 pages. There was one packet put up at 8.07 this morning that's 338 pages. Which 